Thanks for coming. Uh, two weeks ago, when uh, on election night, we had made some promises to the people of Minnesota, and they included that we were going to rein in spending, we were going to reform government, and uh, this part this part that we're working on today is about reforming government. Uh, we're announcing our committee structure today. We'll be announcing uh, committee chairs tomorrow. From the uh, Senate point of view, we've reduced the number of committees from 25 to 16. And then we've worked very closely with the House. And so you're going to see the graphics over here represent the alignment or the perhaps the lack of alignment between the DFL House and DFL Senate. This is the new committee structure and how the accounts and the committees will line up. So we're very excited. We think that this provides, um, it's, we wanted to productively innovate to make government more user friendly. That's a lot about what we talked about on the campaign trail. And so the first thing that we start with, of course, is committee structure. And I think that you're going to find uh, it's not just streamlined, it's not going to, it's going to, but it's going to allow us more time with our constituents and it's going to make the, uh, make the process much more transparent. Additionally, there are some, uh, some bit of savings. It's a little difficult to estimate at this point, but we're estimating in the Senate we'll save uh, between 250 and 300,000. The reduction represents in the Senate a 36% reduction in committees. House? Oh, sure. Well, uh, thank you, Senator Koch. And uh, I think what you see, uh, not only uh, from the chart, uh, but from our actions within two weeks, uh, as Senator Koch said, um, we have uh, reformed government starting with ourselves. Uh, this is not something we're going to jump up and down and pat ourselves on the back about. This is what voters expected of us. This is what they demanded at the uh, on the election on November 2nd, that we get in and we start with ourselves first. Don't go to the programs. Don't go down to to uh, you know start deciding who, which uh, government bureaucrats, quote unquote, we cut. Uh, but we're starting with ourselves. We streamline government. I, I mentioned the, the plate of spaghetti that is the committee structure now. Well, here you go. Take a look. Uh, you know, to, to try to, to navigate that from left to right or side to side, uh, good luck. And in some cases, it was set up that way so that it uh, maybe would uh, be advantage to some chairs or to some members. Uh, we set our structure up so it's an advantage to the taxpayers, to the voters, that their government is easier, more efficient, more effective. It is leaner so that when they come down here, it's easy for them to follow. Uh, we want them to be a part of their government. We want their government now to work for them, not the other way around. Uh, for those that actually come down to the Capitol and want to see their government in action, uh, we think this structure over here uh, lends to that. It's what the, the voters expected and demanded. Uh, we delivered within a very short amount of time something that uh, I think uh, both Amy and I would uh, say from our standpoint has uh, been decades in coming and we're uh, you know, not only on behalf of our caucuses but on behalf of the taxpayers looking to save some money and make government uh, a little more efficient and, as Amy said, user-friendly to the voters and the taxpayers who actually fund us. So. Uh, that's it. Uh, what are we ready for questions? Could the Senator talked about um, a reduction in committees from 25 to 16 in the Senate. Do you have a similar number in the House? Um, in the House, we went from uh, 20, went from 36, I think it was maybe even technically 30, 38 to 40, down to 24 with uh, policy and uh, division. So uh, not quite, uh, about roughly about 30, 35 percent, depending on if you com count all commissions. And, and a billion dollar savings? Is that right? uh, well, we're, we, it depends on once we get into the uh, yeah, billion dollar savings. <laughs> we wish we could do it I that easily. That. <laughs> a little slow. Uh, but that, you know, close to, uh, if not uh, more than at least half a million dollars in savings. How about oversight? When you eliminate committees, what do you do with the oversight that those committees may have provided? Well, I, 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 you know, looking at the structure, all it means is that, that they, there's going to be one-stop shopping in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go, you know, try and find your way through here, whether it's an energy issue, an education issue. If you're a business owner and come and look at this org chart, you'd think that we were insane down here. You look over there and you can say, if it's, uh, if it's going to deal with taxes, I can see that there's in the tax committee in the House, there's a tax committee in the Senate. The oversight's going to be there, absolutely. It's just a matter of, you know, how efficiently we run the place so that you don't have to make six or seven stops while you're down here. And from the other side, once the schedules get lined up, so the tax committee in the House doesn't meet the same time as tax committee in the Senate. And I know there are a few folks in the government relations industry that are going to be very happy to see that part as well. We've uh, we've also done a uh, combining of some policy and finance committees. That's been a, a big step in this. And in reality, if you looked at a lot of the bills, policy and finance were so intertwined anyway. Um, so it just it made a lot of sense, Cindy. 
and the the, the lack of uh, the, the need to meet in a in a subdivision in the house committee especially i was on commerce for my whole time down here to meet on a committee then and have it come up to the full committee uh, a week later or the next the next full committee meeting to hear the same bill over again What's the point? You know, we have we have a commerce committee for that reason. Deal with the issues in the commerce committee. Uh, the bills, in some cases, didn't come up in the division. Um, if they if they didn't warrant coming up to the full division back then, then they shouldn't have been in the subdivision either. So, get rid of all the subdivisions. Have a couple of, uh, of strong strong committees and get through the process. How many staff positions will be eliminated with this streamlining? Well, not, it's not a direct uh, reduction because there was some overlap, let's say, in the CA area uh, for different committees. But there will be, uh, we're still looking at those numbers, but potentially between four and five um, staff reductions in the Senate. I'm not sure if you've looked at the House numbers. Yeah, I mean, and part of it depends on uh, when we combine some of these policy and issue areas. You know, some of them, uh, what we had done actually in the last session with our research staff, we had some uh, researchers that were only session, they were session onlys. So they would come into the research for an issue area. Then as things, as the bills passed, as the policy went through, we could then have that issue absorbed back up into the full committee or, or a, you know, the issue area if it's environment and agriculture can all be together. So uh, we'll look at it. It's, it is going to be a significant reduction though. What's significant? You know, double-digit uh, staff gone, dozens? Well, and, and par again, part of it is our, our ability to, to ask our staff, you know, we're, we need you to handle a little bit more. We're asking you to do more, just like business owners have asked their staff. Um, I, I think it will be uh, double-digit, but we'll, uh, we'll have a, a better number for you. And some of them may be full-time positions that are there, but left open, uh, that are left unfilled, so that if we have to go back, we need a little shock absorber. If we are going to have to cut our own budgets again, after this budget cut, uh, that we'll have that ability. And Mary, I, I think this gives us a, a chance to uh, talk about what we what we framed as try to do a smooth and orderly transition. And speaking on the Senate side, you know, I think by January fourth, we'll be able to give you a better idea of of headcount and personnel. But so today we talk about committee structure. Tomorrow, what most of the people in the room seem to be here for is committee chairs. Um, we are we have worked uh, we've met multiple times with Senator Bach and Senator Pogamiller. Uh, Senator Koch uh, shared this structure with, with uh, Senator Bach this morning. So we are working with the minority. We've got a fairly large move that has to take place between people in the state office building and people in the Capitol. So that we are we are literally boxing up offices and moving forward. Uh, the Secretary of the Senate is a huge uh, hire and then uh, multiple people report to the Secretary of the Senate. So that's another, um, uh, that's another stage, probably again after Thanksgiving. So we're going to take this one step at a time. And in the end, what you'll see is a streamlined Senate, a Senate that has fewer people in it and costs less money to the taxpayers. Are we going to balance the budget just on the Senate itself? No. No, but this is, this is our first chance to streamline and cut some dollars and we're going to do it. Has the leadership made overtures to either of the governor's candidates regarding this restructuring and who might be the point man for whom in ultimately after the after the election is resolved? The, the short answer is no. Regarding the question of oversight though, and working with the Democrats and the minority, already they're concerned about this because they say that there will not be enough oversight. I'm quoting here, this is from uh, Representative Thiessen. My fear is that Republicans will use uh, their new structure to reward the anonymous corporations who helped pay for many of the seats in this election. <laughs> thank you, Pat. And, th <laughs> and thank you, and, 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 just waiting to get and thank you, Representative Thiessen. You know, um, thinking again about oversight, if you have five committees that have oversight, of a single topic, do you really have anyone that's accountable? Do you really have one place that is doing oversight? I think it's actually better that we are streamlined, that we have one committee to go to, one committee to go to for education, one committee to go to for transportation. Uh, it's going to be more transparent. Taxpayers and citizens of Minnesota are going to know where to go. So this is, this is a once in a, at least in the Minnesota legislature, it's a once in a three decade opportunity. We got to draw up new committee structure, working with our members, working with the House. We, we haven't been able to do this before. So I am very proud of the, of the product. And uh, we'll let, uh, we'll let Rep Representative Thiessen's uh, 
political jabs uh, fall to the side there because, uh, again, we've got a lot of work to do between now and January 4th.